Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Bulletproof Dental Practice Podcast. It's just Craig and myself. Craig, how's my audio? Your audio is wonderful. Oh. Good. Rich and luxurious. Peter. Good. good. You know, I've been spoiled on different microphones, but um, <clears throat> the new ones. Um, but here we are together again. You did. You uh, you stood me up at the Hinman. I sure did. Which is okay. It's okay. I appreciate you were coming. That. You were coming in hot off of a cool family vacation. And uh, yeah, I had it handled. And so, it's the Hinman. No, yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> that was terrible. I'm kidding. It's, I was joking. Be, you know, was it was joking. a good showing. I mean, my I gosh. Like, I forgot. The last time I went to Hinman, honestly, was usually I, I went to go shopping for equipment, you know, because there's tons yeah. of equipment providers there, right? So the, so the floor is just, you know, it's honestly, it's where the, uh, the car show and the boat show, the big, the big shows that come, it's on that same floor. And that's, Oh, in Atlanta. Is. Yeah. And yeah, I, I think of the Hinman and the New York and the Chicago, those are like the big, big boys in my, mm-hmm. I've never been there. Um, I've been in New York one once a long time ago, mm-hmm. but you, yeah, heard, you told me it was a big showing though. Like what, yeah, it's about you 17, 000? 000. that's a huge showing. Don't you think? Yeah. I mean, look, I found out more about it. It's really, it's a not for profit scenario. Um, they they do it wrote more as a there's a lot of good that comes from the Hinman is what I found out you know the good. tickets are not are pre, are not cost prohibitive um, it's mainly as a CE aggregator to to have people come in and like we heard with Rich Constantine who was there really good guy in person um, I hope that came through on the airways but uh, you know he had two two lectures. That two Did he do the same topic twice? Is that what it was? I'm guessing. I, I think. I think he was so oversubscribed and is uh, in the people good that wanted him. to see him. That yeah, look, him. because it's it's interesting. It's it's contemporary content. I mean, everyone wants to know about marketing and what his experience was, and you know how he's rolled this in. Because I think it's you know it's also like relatable saying, too. So one so of those dentists that listens could be doing some viral video and wind up on like, yeah, we had some good discussions even (laughs) offline after that. Like he was digging into the bulletproof hygiene gals, asking them all sorts of questions and they were giving him feedback and it was great. It was great. It's great. Um, Nice guy. Um, So like I was telling before we hit record, I went down there on Saturday and I started, I was like, you know, I didn't see anyone that I knew that I was comfortable enough pulling in and saying, Hey, let's do a podcast. So I, I attempted to fly solo on the topic that I wanted to do. You don't know what that topic is. But we're going to do it today because I feel like it's better with you. It'll be better. Oh, with thank you, bud. Yeah, Appreciate that. Of course. Of course. Um, so the topic, Craig, is going to be, and the, and the topic, bear with me, is reducing the friction in dentistry. Okay. Can you and, unpack that a little bit for me? Yes, I'm going to. I'm going to. So where I go with this is I think that that how hard are you making potential patients Oh yeah. Like barriers to entry. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like how, right. How hard is it for potential business, potential patients to do business with you? Yeah. And so I have five areas in which I feel that people really need to be kind of looking at in terms of auditing their systems and making sure that they've reduced friction as much as possible within their own ecosystem. And I think, you look, I think that is going to be one of the great differentiators, you know, as we know that Amazon Look, the one touch buying or that one click buying, they found that that sales went up. If someone could just hit the button once versus mm-hmm. having to do three buttons, that sales went up 42%. Yeah. Look at Shopify where it populates your information right away. Right. Or look at Tesla going to a mall. You have to go to some cheesy car dealership and there's no haggling. Like everybody pays different prices for cars. It's so upsetting. It you, know, you have to be like skilled to go get a car. So success is leaving clues, right? And these monster billion, almost trillion dollar, trillion biz, trillion businesses, trillion dollar businesses are leaving clues that say, hey, this is where the way people are going to function. And like I always say in the summits, Craig, that these big businesses are the ones that are indoctrinating our patients because they're using sure. them every day on the way things should be. So it is incumbent upon us to try and do as much as we can. Granted, we're in a service industry. We're in a business. That, that is location-based. Not It's not an Uber. It's not Amazon where things get delivered to you. But it still is the same thing. I think it behooves us to look at look at how we can kind of be more like them. Yeah, Great, it's sure. not a direct analog, but like it, no, it's, but it, it's, it's, it's a worthy us. exercise, right? I like what you're saying. You're saying that people are being trained 
Like yeah. we never needed our stuff there overnight until FedEx came around and could do it. <laughs> I was saying like, wait, I got this thing like in a day. Why did I wait two weeks for snail mail? It becomes, it becomes it's intolerable. Crazy. It's crazy. All right. So the first thing I think it starts with is um, where people need to be reducing friction is getting the information they want. Are they getting the answers they want? And this starts online. And I truly think it's where videos and comprehensive uh, stuff on your website can help you get answers. Because it goes back to the law of reciprocity, Craig. And it gets more exciting from here, just so bear, bear with me on this. But I think, I'm really starts, already. I think it really starts online where, where people are seeking something. They're, they're, they're pressed for time. They know they want to check off. I want to find a new dentist off their to-do list. And they're, but they have seeking answers. So, and to find those answers, can they get it all on the website? Meaning what's this procedure like? Do they accept my insurance. If there's any, where's this located? Am I going to meet the doctor? All these things. Can they check off the boxes on your website? If they can't, and they have to pick up the phone to find out answers, that could be inefficient for their day. Correct? Of course. Yeah. So that's where I think even bots can play a role. Although people know their computers and bots, but at least you can you and I have them on our website and, and they're good for just, you know, routine answers of finding out information for people. So I think it starts online. And I think that is the, the greatest advantage is, is if you can educate and give people what they want, the right. law of reciprocity goes in and they say, wow, I got all my needs met. How can I give back? It's just, it's just how humans do. How can I give back? Well, how they can give back is by scheduling, which, so, which brings me to the next topic. Well, I got one more thing on that too. Please. So you, you talked about um, getting your needs met, but it's also the, you know, we all, we all know that the fundamental instinct of humans is to conserve calories, conserve energy. Mm -hmm. And if you have a, a, a brand that, you know, you're called Dr. Jones Family Dental, but then you go online and it's Boulder Family Cosmetic Dentist, Dental Center, and you can't find the information out. You don't want to work to figure out who you're dealing business with. You want to see the doctor. It would be great if you had a video, photos, real photos. You don't want to have to work or think about it too much. So I think you could have all the information that's readily available, but you're making it difficult for the new patient to to understand who you are. Wait, I thought they're I thought they're a Boulder Family Dentistry. Why? Is, who's Doctor Jones? If dentistry? you confuse, you will lose. Exactly. So that that's the other part of it too. It's just and, like and also, Craig, would you agree that dentistry is kind of a scary place? People are looking for yeah. reasons to not go, and so the right. more you can break down those reasons of like, there's the doctor, there's the name. I heard him talk. He doesn't right. look like he doesn't look crazy. He doesn't look like he's going to hurt yeah. me. He has a dog. Yeah, he does friendly injections. Kids. Yeah. But it's true when you when you look at some of our masterminders, we've had um, we've looked at their websites, we've gone through it on on our on our calls and during the mastermind, and seen like wait, I remember like pulling up a, a a website with one of our doctors, and I'm like, is this your website? Yeah. And then I went around the internet and I found like some Google photos. I'm like, is this the inside of your office? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, who the hell designed this? This is amazing. Yeah. He's like, oh, is a German architect. I'm like. Well, how is that not on your website? Like, if I see that, I see this beautiful office with beautiful floor to ceiling glass and amazing equipment. Why are you not highlighting that? Why so some of us stock photos, right? Some of us have beautiful environments and beautiful team and great content. We just choose not to put it on because Acme dental website company that you went uh -huh. to uses that, you know, stock images and they put right a picture of some generic doctor. I'd and almost rather... probably too, Craig, by the end of, look, you and I have done several website redesigns, but almost by the time you get to designing a website, even, even regardless of the level that you went to uh, in your production quality, right? By the time you get to the end, you have a lot of fatigue that goes yeah, along like, with the it. back and forth. Yeah. So you're like, this is good enough, right? And yeah, it's so like building a house. The stock this, photos. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, you're just like, just, and put any tile you want in there. I, don't I, I just want to go back to work. I just want to go right. back to work and not have conversations this with this guy where I'm pixel pushing him around. Right. Say, no, 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 move this text down. No, 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 move right. this picture. I love the pixel pushing. Pixel pushing. Um, yeah. But the friction of just understanding the brand. I don't know if you're going to say that too. Well, 
friction of not being comfortable, right? Like I yeah. said, I think I think people are looking for ways of like dentistry is a scary place. They're looking. 100%. I, I think fear is a friction point. And if you whatever you can do to reduce the fear and unknowns by presenting that online, you need to do so. Hundred percent. Full stop. Okay. So full stop. Pencils full down. Stop. Two, two Peter Boldenisms. Go ahead. <clears throat> All right. So next thing I think that reduces friction is the ability to have online consultations. And this was obviously important in the birth of COVID and everyone went, went, went fleeing to uh, online consultations because what else could we do? I still think it has a place. Um, you know, there's several places online that do it. Uh, I'm sorry, online or softwares that do it. But I think it's one of those things that it allows people the ability to connect with you. So they don't have to get in the car, call an appointment, all these things. The downfall, Craig, is that if you offer this service and then you don't actually reciprocate, meaning you, you, yes, there are a lot of tire kickers that come through the online consultation pathways. But if you don't reciprocate to them, sometimes it can actually work against you, meaning that there's people after three to five days say, well, I haven't heard a response. Now they're mad, yeah. right? So it's one of those things. If you have extra bandwidth in your day, doc, and you want to, you want to push in and give to doing online consultations, awesome. That's a great way to reduce friction and get an at-bat where there might not be any at-bats. But if you don't, if you're already overwhelmed, do not open this Pandora's box, in my opinion. Yep. Agreed. Same thing with social media, by the way. Like if you have, if you don't, if you're just pushing stuff out, but not, no one's watching it, mm -hmm. people will comment like, I want to come in for that procedure yeah. or on your YouTube videos. I want to come in. I want to get that. No one responds. It's, yeah. It can be looked at as bad on you as well. Well, you're right. It defeats the purpose, right? It's a ghost town. If, if it's, a, that becomes a unilateral way of communication, not by the percent, which, okay. So the next thing, I'm glad you're saying this, is actually communication. Do you have the ability to communicate with patients via text messaging? Um, a, patients prefer it. Everyone, I mean, Craig, even our generation, I would say, we prefer that, or would prefer that over picking up and calling. You mean your generation? You know, my mother's generation, you know, the you baby mean my boomers. generation? You mean, you mean your you mom? Boomer? Yeah. Are you a baby boomer? I am, yeah. What is that, 47? Maybe not officially would prefer that method, but I think they are, you know, look, my mom texts me all the time. So I think, I think that generation is getting more and more conducive to doing. <laughs> hey, mom, what's up? Um, I just had an insult for you. That was so funny in my head. No, no. I think it's, a, it's just a shout out. I know. It's um, great. No, you said my mom texts me all the time. Like your mom texts me all the time too, bro. Oh, I didn't <laughs> like hear that, that part. No, no, you didn't. I had it in my head. It's just oh. typical boy talk. Boy, that's silly. I'm sorry. Uh, Zing, I'm sorry. I zinger. Digress. Zinger. Um, so the cool thing is with these text communication platforms, obviously a lot of softwares now they're integrated in. I'm not going to give any specifics as to, as to which one, because, um, you know, that gives, that makes they all have referential. Them bolt -ons now. A lot of them have this bolt-ons. And if you don't, if you're not using a software, there are actually third-party apps, even like, you know, we've used ZipWhip in the past, things like that, where you can just pay as a service and you actually use your landline. I think it's really important to be able to be able to text or call the same number from a marketing standpoint and For actually sure. your text. So um, using your landline as the text number is pretty cool. And, and I will say, Craig, that I think my, my team prefers it as well. And here's why. They can be having, when you're on the phone, obviously you can only be having one conversation. When people are texting, they can sometimes manage because it sets up as text threats, just like you can be texting three or four people at the same time where bubbles are going on kind of thing in your phone sure. and, and you don't get confused. They can do the same thing. So I think it makes us, A, the, a, the patient thinks it's really cool that they can text their de new dentist office. Plus there's, B, certain things, there's certain things you can tell people. So, I'm sorry, A, go ahead, B. And then wanna... B, the, yeah, and then B, look, I think the constraint, the constraint in almost every dental practice is the phones or the business 100%, 100%. Team, right? It's the and bottleneck. So if we can find ways to reduce that constraint and friction, but also make it as, an, as, a, as a patient benefited service, yeah, we need to do better as a profession doing that because listen, we all know when we call JetBlue to make a, call, a flight, like cheaper fares exist online. And, and by the way, you're just going to talk to somebody who's actually just online for you. Exactly. They're looking at the exact same screen that you are. I did. I'm doing that right now, like literally with Delta right now. Like, and, and by the like, way, I want I want to bring something else up uh, um, that that I was thinking right when you were talking. Um, 
it was there's certain things that you can text people, but you can't tell them. So if somebody calls your office mm. and says, hey, I really want to know where you're located. You can't say, hey, go to Google. You can find it there. I'm not your Google, dumbass. You can't say I that. Google that for you. Yeah, let me go. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, you, there's this thing. So, but you can text that. Here's a link. Because someone will say like, yeah, are you right in the corner? Are your Johns Creek office? Is that is that near the Baskin Robbins? Here's a link. Here's a link. I know, I know. But it, but when you're at the mall and you're looking at Nordstrom's, would you go to the left or the right? Like, uh, like, get, like, just stop this conversation. You can't have Well, them. you bring up a good point, right? So from that, we actually have built-in verbiage sheets that people can cut and paste into for the routine sure. questions that you get. Notoriously, you're going to get the same question, 80% of the same questions on yeah. the phone or on text. It doesn't matter the platform. And so it almost makes it like, so much faster because you can you can cut and paste a long paragraph of, of scripted verge, verbiage much faster than you can say it of course so so that's a good thing um and like i said teams can manage three or four patients at once through text portal so it makes us more efficient at, at the same time the third way i think to reduce friction is having the ability to allow people to online schedule hmm. there are pros and cons to everything craig and we're going to talk about that i know you life. Uh, what's that? Everything in life is a pro and a con. Well, look, the positive is that you look, you look like you're on the bleeding edge of technology and it looks like you're allowing patients to choose for them. The problem is, is a lot of these softwares, softwares, software, yeah, softwares, um, will basically just look at your schedule and open up everything that looks open, which I think can be catastrophic, especially if you are pre-blocking your schedule, which you probably should be. And if you're not, that's a whole different topic. Um, now, the ones that will allow you to open up certain blocks for certain procedures, right? And not just like open up your entire schedule, that's where you wanna go or else it'll introduce chaos and your, and your front business team will hate it in my opinion. Yeah. The, the other caveat to that, Craig, and I think you'll agree with this, which you've experimented with it as well, is that there's no accountability with people when they yeah. book completely online. So the no-show rate or the failure rate is, is high. It's, it's on magnitude higher than if someone schedules it via the phone. Because when they schedule it on the phone, obviously they have, a, they, have, they have a relationship with Christine, right? And now they know Christine and she's at the front desk and she's asked for these things. And it creates this relationship. Now there's accountability to a human. When there's only been accountability to a computer or computer screen, they, they say, ah, oh, if I skip it, no big deal. No big deal. Until you enter your credit card, because we all have accountability. I was just about to, to say there are services, but people yeah. really, you know, there's pushback on that, you know. And and I think that introduce while you're reducing friction in one area, you're introducing it in another. Yep. Okay. So, but I do think it's worthy to look at. I don't, de I don't, we don't deal with it in our platform mainly because I can't, Craig, because we use it. I can't either. Of, of EagleSoft where it doesn't, it's not integrated. Um, it just wasn't working for me. And again, listen, this is very independent and individual. Certain people may have a no-show rate of one or 2% and others may have a no-show rate of 15%. So what's intolerable for you as a dentist? Meaning you start using one of these online scheduling platforms, you get a 9% no-show rate. It still could be better than your 15% you're normally getting. But to me in our practice, that would be intolerable. Now people will say, well, look, we book them and then we called back to confirm. We, we actually use a live person just to confirm and that's fine. But that is mainly just a confirmation call with no relationship and still no accountability. It may increase at a couple percentage points, but I still think it's there. So to your point, Greg, in some practices, this may be a win. In some practices, this may be more trouble than it's worth. And I think you and I both illustrated that it's more trouble than it's worth. We allow it for, we, we allowed it. And when we tried it in beta for just certain procedures at certain times of the day and just went and saw and see what we saw, but it wasn't enough for us to then make a, make a sweeping change. Are you going to talk about hours? Nope, but 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 we can add that to the list. Yeah, because that's a fresh point. In hey, hey, let's put a pin in that. Let's okay. put a pin in that one. We'll add okay. it to the last. Okay. Okay. Next thing is online pin inserted. Paper. The next thing is online paperwork and uh, new patient paperwork. You know, you'd be surprised how many how many practices will you know in today's day and age will still have them get there, have the patient get there, and then hand them a clipboard through the uh, sliding glass uh, window. Yeah. And make them sit down and fill it out with a brick is, tied to it. <laughs> with a what? With a with pen a tied brick, to the top, a pen or a, or pen the, or a brick. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> which is a, a gas highly station efficient. key. <clears throat> Yeah, there's so much wrong with that scenario. I, I, I can't comment. But the biggest thing I think is, A, if you ever had a patient that shows up that hasn't filled out their paperwork preemptively, it can potentially really screw your schedule up from a, from a, like meaning that Mrs. Jones, you ever heard your team be like, she's been out there for 45 minutes filling out paperwork. Yeah. Right. And then, an but she showed up on time for her two o'clock appointment. And yeah. now it's 245 and you can't not see her. So it's almost yeah, like she was on time. It's just your paperwork got her in trouble. Yeah, your paperwork. And it was really confusing and long. So and, make and sure you gave you her have... an iPad and she's never used an iPad. <laughs> yeah. And she hit cancel and she's on page seven of nine and it was all gone. She has to start over. It's so true. If, if, the, hey, if it wasn't real, like, I mean, all these yeah, things this stuff is real. <clears throat> um, so make sure you have ability to do online paperwork. Make sure you're getting it probably two days in advance and make sure someone's reviewing it before, as you kind of verify the schedule going forward, in my opinion. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, and I would also make sure that there's platforms now that, that allow you to, to integrate. And where I'm going with this, Craig, is that if you have a third party, we used to have a third party where you'd fill out a web form and then it would basically PDF it to our office, but then we still had to input that data directly into our software there mm -hmm. are there is direct integrations now and and we will go over that but that will save your team lots of time over the course of the year like hundreds of hours not a little amount of time hundreds of hours and if you think about the cost of that hundreds of hours it's massive so find a way to find direct integration agree i agree okay the last one and then we will go to two hours is <clears throat> reduce the friction on how people can pay you yeah. Here's where I mean by this. For so long, we sent out statements for $9, $24, $67. And guess what we found, Craig? It wasn't that people were unwilling to pay. It's that no one has stamps anymore. No one has yeah, envelopes. Exactly. No, one wants to, no one wants to have checks. No one, I, don't, I don't know how to write a check these days very right? easily for my And bank. so as soon as we made a text ability to pay on our portal, yeah. lo and behold, the problem went away for the most part. Yeah. I want to give a shout out to Abella for helping with that, by the way. Yeah. I told, I was with, you know, Abella is helping me a lot. Um, I think I uh, use them as well, but it's just mm -hmm. like, it, I told uh, Bruce Barrett, I'm like, people don't have a payment problem. They have a process problem around paying. Mm -hmm. I mean, the day, the day of Apple pay, you walk in Starbucks, you don't have to touch anything. Now I have to go like, write a check and send it. If you're doing that, give them a better way. There's, yep. there's, there's so many ways to do it. Yeah. You I mean, look at how business, I mean, think of how many different ways you could pay. Yeah. I mean, think about in your personal life. Like if someone, if someone's like, Hey, I got dinner. Can you get, can you run, run by and bring me a check? You'd be like, no, exactly. no, let me just Venmo you. Let me right. just PayPal you. Right. It's unacceptable to have to make someone pay by via check yeah, now. <clears throat> and so that's yeah, a it's just stuff remarkable for a lot of businesses. People are just not unwilling to pay. They just yeah. need an easy button for that. Yeah. That's it. Um, we've done direct integration. Our bank actually gave us a portal, Craig, which was, which was Abella has helped us. And I think we do use them, but, but our, but obviously from our merchant processing, we wanted to get a direct integration there and they've helped us there. So there's, it's awesome. th there's ways to do it. You just got to yeah, dig there's in. There's tons of ways. There's Venmo for business and there's PayPal for business. There's Zelle. But it's, there's it's shocking how many people send out statements. Like yeah. when I say send out statements, I mean the 32 cent, how much is a stamp these days? I don't, I don't know. even know. No, I, I think know. it's 32, 34. Anyway, it's remarkable. So it takes time for people to put it in as well. Oh my as God. Well. You know what it is? What? 58 cents. No way. Yeah. You know what we sound like right now? Those old guys like, I remember what a sandwich was. Only no. Well, 30. I do remember like, yeah. well, maybe I'm thinking of like 58 those cents. There's no way one stamp. is. Yes. Yeah, so I just Googled cents. it. Google's never wrong. Let me Cost of the stamp. Point. Cost of a first claim. Mm -hmm. First class mail, one ounce US postage stamp, 58 cents according to that January must have 9th. gone up recently. Yeah. And if that's the case, Craig, then then yes, number January 9, number 2022. Five and the post five. office is still losing billions of dollars. Yeah, that needs to go private. Um mm, very political of you. Um, but yeah, so the point number five about how to reduce friction in your business makes it even more applicable because having to send out a 58 cent statement. For potentially Stamp, something yeah. that is $9. Yeah. Right. And then you're having to send it four or five times and then yeah. collections. No, I can't do that. Which gets automated, by the way. 
Yeah. hundred percent. I think we beat this one up. Okay. And the last thing is hours. Number six. Um, I've, I've done this before. Uh, have you ever done Saturday hours, Peter? We have, we have a colossal failure. It was a colossal failure for me too. Why was it such a failure for you? Because of the, we, the only way it's ever worked is in a hundred percent pre-pay scenario. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. So if we didn't do that and we've done it for certain cases, but those were cases that we were actually doing a patient benefit. Uh, yeah, I'm not talking. Favorite. I'm talking about just staying open for cleanings. And yeah, um, blah, 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 here's blah. the thing. Saturdays are people's free time. It's what they live for. If it's a sunny day and something better comes up, guess what yeah. happens? The dentist can, uh, the dentist, uh, who cares about them? I don't, I'll just, I'll just reschedule with them. There's probably yeah. even no penalty and they probably have an availability next week. So screw them. I'm going to the beach today. Saturdays are dangerous, in my opinion, unless you're emergency or unless you um, unless you do it in a prepay scenario. Now, I think what's better, Craig, than, than, than Saturday would be extended hours. And I don't mean extended hours really long. Um, An hour earlier, hour later. Yeah. Yeah. Especially those those premium spots. Well, what about now that daylight savings time is going to become permanent? Well, not until daylight, like 2023. The no sunshine, way. The Sunshine Act. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know it's till 2020. Yeah, Google, so that's Google, Hey, let me Google that for you. Google the Sunshine Act. I don't think it goes in. Sunshine it, Act. No, I like it's that. It's the Sunshine Protection Act. Ooh, that sounds even better. Yeah, the Sunshine. Sunshine Act 20. Uh, this is something different. I pulled now Congress different. is protecting sunshine. That's awesome. Because we is need that, Did I get it right? Um, no, I'm seeing Sunshine Act is um, your organization's compliance yeah, yeah, when yeah. you open payment. All right, so Google Daylight Savings just so I <laughs> exactly. save Exactly. Just okay. so I say face here. Live. What am I like? You're Jamie. Yeah, you are Jamie. Jamie, you can Google Jamie. Jamie, look this up. Show Jamie, me, look show this me up. The okay. Act. U.S. Senate approves bill to make daylight savings time. I don't know if it's called Sunshine Act. Come on, it's it's like it's like protection. No, there's no. Act. Yeah, there's no protection of oh any sort. That I see. Craig, you got it. You're just doing this to. to no, make I'm not. I want to support you. I want to support doing that you. all by myself. Yeah, this is all you, man. Um, I have. Do, do we have five seconds? Yeah. I've got to I've got to make a public uh, correction for myself. I said something in the podcast and people called me out on it. Oh, so when? I had said uh, just the other day on Mighty Network, someone I had said that um, Howard Ferran has not done um, a uh, larger format office, and someone told me that in his thirty day dental MBA course, he says he owned a four doctor two million plus office in the late nineties and has done startups over the years. That he later sold to the associates. So I was not aware of that. Howard, you're a badass. I always, I always like Howard, and uh, and I'm happy Good. when people give comments mm -hmm. to correct any of us. Um, if you like what we're saying, comment. If you don't like what we're saying, comment. It's yeah, an interactive. And, and look, it, it's never actually to throw shade. Although sometimes I guess you're throwing a little shade. I was throwing a little people, shade, but not definitely not Howard. Um, no, no. But that's cool, cool that you got that they got rep, that get um, that you took this opportunity to kind of correct yeah. yourself. Well, look, so it was Craig, in the nineties too, the Peter. It was just in the, the 90s, record. so two million dollars in the 90s. That's like that's a lot now. 25 million now. It's like 475 million. Yep. <laughs> when stamps so, are four cents. <laughs> yeah, stamps were literally 18 cents. Um, so here's what it's called: the Sunshine Protection Act of 2022. Okay. I okay. believe it. So just want to make sure I knew I wasn't going. going well, listen, saying. now we don't have to go correct it in a future podcast. Sunshine Protection Act. Look, yes. Look how efficient were we just now? Yeah, look yeah. at that. So Congress is going to do it. And when is it happening? 2023? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to extend my hours when that goes down. Yeah. So, well, here's the thing is that it's sometimes in certain areas of the country, it's not going to be, the sun will not come up until about 9.30 a.m. Yeah. That's in the northern portions of the country. Right? And so yeah. obviously- More people it, are going to move to Florida be, and Georgia. It, you know, they're doing it. If you, live, if you live in Wisconsin, get out now. Get out now. <laughs> that doesn't bother me. I'd much rather have daylight in the afternoon for longer than like summers is just so awesome for that. And that it like you just get more light. It's just that it's a, it's depressing leaving the office at 4 30 and it's like getting home out. and it's dark. It's like yeah. feels like you just sunk the whole day. I agree. In the converse, in the in the reverse of that, you actually feel very efficient by getting up before the sun. Yeah, it's true. You feel like a badass. You feel like you're Look a child. I'm, like, I'm like a modern day farmer. I'm like a yeah. farmer who gets up and and, and plows you're the like fields. The rock working out at like four in the morning, but you're really working at it at nine. Nine it just feels dark. Nine a.m. I kind of like before, this. I'm, I'm actually going to vote for it. 
Yeah, I'm gonna. Well, it doesn't matter. So I think it passed, right? Well, um, I don't know if it's passed or not, but yes, yeah, Senate passes bill five days okay, ago. Perfect. perfect. I'm glad we're talking about this, by the way. Yeah, this is important stuff, Greg. It really is. Well, it is important in terms of modifying happens. your hours. You're right. You're right. Um, okay. Do I got a funny else? text, by the way. One funny text just came through from a buddy of mine. Yo, are these valuations for practice sales getting tempting yet for you? So what do you think I write? Wait, wait. Are these? Is are he, these is valuations for is practice this sales? This is a you? dentist texting me. Okay. Um, Yo, nope. are these getting tempting? Meaning, are they getting? Yeah, are, like are things are get, yeah. getting getting tempting. Yeah, I said nope. I like my life. And then he writes, <laughs> "My buddy probably taking ten million dollars on his two point eight million dollar gross solo practice." Zero. I go. I, I I know that he is probably getting. I go. What's the EBITDA? 1.1 full year, but last six months are turning towards 1.3. So he's basically getting like a 10 on forward revenue. By the way, oh, by the way, Peter, I just saw your, your shirt. I have the same exact shirt. I have the you same do? exact water shirt. Yeah. But anyway, this is the problem. Everybody's getting the same flyer. It's happening at my house, by the way. People the are mail. cold. Yeah. They're getting flyers in the mail. People are cold calling me saying like they want to buy my house for ridiculous sums of money. But um, when you have your own, and I don't want to hijack this because it's the close of this podcast, but when you have, you're the sole producer in your practice, you don't have a business. It's okay. We talk about this all the time because LeBron has a bit, has, it doesn't selling have a business a either. I'm sorry. You're selling a job. You're selling your job. And what that means is if you really want to get out quick, you're not going to be able to get that money. They're going to pay you with your money. It's basically mm-hmm. like a paycheck advance, which is fine, but just call it what it is. And he's probably not going to get that. I will follow up with the story. Well, the interesting thing, like we've said, and, and we have to wrap here in a second, but the interesting yeah. thing is it's the bait and switch. This is a true bait and switch, meaning here comes the postcard in the mail that says, Doc, you can get 200% of top line revenue. In this case, he, they're saying 300%. No, five. He did 2.3. He's getting 10. Oh, okay. So five, five okay, times so four. top line. Okay. So here's what all they're doing. Is they're going to get a 2.8 hot and, and bothered. So yeah, so it's like three and a half times gross. All right. So here's what happened. This is perfect psychology. This is human psychology. You get people all hot and bothered with the idea, the rom- the romantic amount of money. Okay. You have a couple discussions about this. Right. And you, the doctor Sounds now, like you've been, sounds like this on, is familiar. Hold on, doc. Hold on. <laughs> and I they hire, what doc. firm do they hire? They Hold hire on. Let firm. me go through the damn path. Yeah, go, Let me go, go through go, this, go, the go. process, asshole. Go. God, you keep interrupting me. Go. All right. And you know what? Uh, jerk, no, I'm jerk. Go jerk. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. So here we have the postcards. Now we've got now like, damn, that's a good offer. You pick up the phone and you talk. Now it's a couple discussions. The doctor sees this as being very viable based on the limited amount of information they've given. Now, when it goes into this, this place of, of validating the profitability, the company is, is now going to start scorching you in terms of reverse engineering exactly what they want to pay for your practice. But guess what? You've psychologically already spent the money and bought the beach house in your head for $10 million. <laughs> and so now you're thinking, oh my gosh, but you've committed to almost selling in your head. So this is the mind beep yeah. that, that goes on and, um, yeah. you know, whatever. I just what love it is. the probably getting. Come on, guys. Probably Come getting. I, I told you about the conversation I had at a at a at a, at a cocktail party, essentially, where the the woman I met a woman and she said, "Hey, well, you know," and she said, "This, I'm sick of practice." And I was like, "Why don't you sell me your practice?" She's like, "Will you pay this?" I'm like, "Do you do this?" Meaning, she's like, "Will you pay five million? I was like, "Do you do like close to five million? Like, no, we, I do one, one point two or something." And I was yeah. like, "Walk me through this." She's like, "Well, I got a postcard in the mail." Literally, I got a postcard in the mail. I know what it's worth. And literally, my if, if heads could explode, my head would have just exploded. And I tried to be like nice about it, but I was like, wow, the yep. knowledge in this space is just startling. I know. Oh, well. Been, th- been there, done that. Been there, done that. Um, all right, Craig, we got a wrap. We got another pod. We are, we are going on um, someone else's pod here in about, in about five minutes. So we will hopefully syndicate that. But, if, but I'm not going to re- reveal which one in case we don't. Sure. Okay. Did you enjoy the uh, the oceans lapping behind me? By the way, the ocean. Yes, it's incredibly nice. I, I yeah, love your yeah, new yeah. beach house. It's. A, I actually went a, to, Did you purchase that in the metaverse? Etsy. I went to Etsy and uh, and and paid a dollar for that. 
Did is that is that property you own in the metaverse though? Mm, yes, yes. Nice. I figured you'd be a metaverse guy, Peter. Wait, who's not a metaverse guy? No. Oh. <laughs> exactly. I've actually staked it now, Craig. So if you get on my property, you owe me some tokens. Okay. I think I've sat here for at least 40 minutes. So I'm going to owe you, you know, shit. Snoop, Snoop is down the way, down the rock, the bluff there a little bit. He's got property down down the way. This yeah. is in uh, Decentraland. You know, exactly. Decentraland. Okay. <laughs> I'll pay you in the first of never worry. Never. <laughs> All right, buddy. Nice Over to talk to you, we'll, uh, we'll see you guys next time on the Bulletproof Dental uh, Practice Pod. I get your tickets for the summit. We're almost out. The hotel's almost fully gone. Yeah. You know that, Is right? Mm-hmm. I didn't know. I didn't know yep. that the hotel was out, but um, not yeah, it's going to be yet, hot. But it's, it's about to be out. It's going to be hot. Don't delay because in uh, June in Nashville is going to be just perfect weather, perfect time. June third and fourth. Yep. June third, fourth. Check it out. Bulletproofsummit.com. That's it, everybody. We'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.